Welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy. I'm Tim. I'm Rod. And today we're taking a look at a game that should be on Kickstarter right now called Mining Maniac. In the base game, it plays two to four people in roughly 60 to 75 minutes. In Mining Maniac, you are the CEO of a mining corporation. Go out, find resources, mine them, hire workers, sell them on the open market, and make money. After a matter of 12 years or 12 rounds, whoever has the most money wins the game. It's that simple. So Tim, tell us about the rules and how hard or easy it is to start. Okay, uh, this game's actually pretty easy to get into. They do a great job with this instruction booklet. Lots of big pictures uh, to go along with their text. Um, and of course, I, I always like when they bold and highlight uh, sections and stuff in these uh, in keywords. But here they, they do a great job of setting you up for the first game, uh, going through the setup for every game, and giving you pictures of exactly what it's supposed to look like. So you have an understanding of exactly how this is supposed to go. Um, and then here it's got the full setup and how it looks after you're all done. Uh, and then it does a great job of uh, step by step through each one of the, the, the turns and uh, each step in the turn and the phase. Um, and then everything that happens in detail. So the first time you go through this, you'll probably go through step by step with the instructions uh, and does a great job of walking through. We had no issues there. And then every player had one of these little reference uh, cards. Very nice. That shows each one of the steps. Um, it doesn't tell out the details on the card. It's just kind of like a, a reference, basically, so you can remember. And then it has all the character cards on the back, which is really great um, for when it's the character selection turn. So you can kind of look up what you kind of want. So, so all in all, they did a great job on the instruction booklet. Uh, it is a pretty simple game, so the instruction booklet should not be difficult, <laughs> and that's what they did. They made an easy uh, instruction booklet for easy. I mean, we've done a lot of Kickstarter previews now, and I really think this was the best done instruction booklet. It was easy to figure out. You got right into it. Resource or these player aids made it super easy. I was really impressed with it. So, so Rod, why don't you tell us about the components and what you get with the, this game? And it might change with Kickstarter, I guess, but tell us about what was sent to us. Okay, so the game itself comes in a nice box. Uh, it's nice and thick. Uh, the um, overall components of the game, there's lots of components, which is great, and the components are useful. So a lot of times, sometimes you'll get games and you'll never even use the component and that type of thing, but these are all used. Uh, so obviously it's a card game, um, so you have a bunch of cards which have your minerals or you have your uh, whatever character you are, which is recruiters and so on. Uh, the artwork is just, you know, what it should be. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it's outstanding, but it's not bad. It's just what it should be. I mean, gold looks like gold. <laughs> yeah. A recruiter looks like a recruiter and that type of thing. You get a nice board that keeps you going with basically what's going on with the market. has the cards for there just to let you know what dollar value you're at and so on. You get a die. You get the coins here that represent the um, how much money that you have or how much is in the bank that you need to get. Um, but it has a little bit of everything. I mean, the cards are nice. You know, they're, they're thick enough. They're they're going to hold up well. The um, only thing that you know that we've already discussed is that we think some of the stuff might be replaced. And might, I think it's something to do with the coins might be thicker. But all in all, I think the coins are great. I was really. Sh I mean, this might be the best produced game that we've gotten from right. Kickstarter. I agree with that. I mean, linen cards. Yeah. You know, I mean, nice wooden uh, pieces, wooden dice. You know. I mean, it's just. I was really impressed with how nice it really was being a Kickstarter like a. You know, so, anyways. Yeah, and how well thought out <laughs> each one of the components is. Like, say, the market price even has plus one, minus one on here. Mm -hmm. So if if an instant card says it's it's only it's minus one for that mm -hmm. round, you can actually slide the card down so that everybody remembers that remembers, that's right. Right, which is, is really nice. So let's talk about how you play um, Mining Maniac. There are just four steps in this game. And so uh, at the beginning, you're going to deal out market price. And this is where the, the heart of the game is and how much uh, minerals are worth each round. So the very first step after the first round would be to rotate the market. So it's just real simple. Everything will just slide up one, whatever was at the end goes back to the end for future and so it's just going to keep rotating through in the price so you could kind of gauge what's going to be happening unless somebody changes this you know that next round gold is going to be worth two and copper is going to be worth three so it could help you on your turn to figure out what you want to get so that's the first step is step number one. Second step is character selection so this is kind of a unique aspect to this game where there's character cards and so what you'll do is you'll go around and each person will take a turn 
secretly looking at character cards. I think you set aside a certain number, maybe two each round, and then you're going to be looking for a character that you want to have that round. Each one of these characters have a special ability. And so you pick a character and then you pass it around to everybody else. <laughs> just toss them all over. <laughs> you just throw them all. <laughs> and then after that point, then uh, you do an incident. Uh, so each year of the game or round, you're going to turn over an incident card. And so this has all kinds of things that could happen. It can make you lose a resource you already have. It could change the prices of the market or change what happens that round. It could make a certain item go up in value or down in value on that round. There's all kinds of different incidents that happen. You could lose workers. You could gain workers. It's good and bad. So, And then that stays throughout the entire round. And so then the next thing that you do is you go in, in turn order. So whoever's the first player on that round will start calling out numbers, one, two, three, four. On your character cards, it has a number in the top left. And so if you're number one, then you would go first, and then you would use your character ability. So then when it is your turn, whenever you get your number, then you're going to go. And the way that a, a turn works is you use your character ability first, and then you roll the die. And when you roll the die, it's real simple. Uh, whatever number you roll, there's just one die in the game. And so you got one, two two, three, and then if you row a four, five, or six, so it's horizontal first and then vertical second. And so let's just say that I rolled a two, one, two, I would flip over every card in the second row. Now the rules state that you can only send workers to go get a resource card if it's face up, unless there's a special ability that you have through a character card. But basically on your turn, then you get to do two actions. So um, there's multiple things that you can do, but you get to do two things on a turn. So what can you do on a turn? You could buy workers, up to three workers or four, four workers on a turn you could pay for. And so you pay a dollar or a, a money per worker, so you could get those, add them to your thing. And then in the top uh, left of each card, they tell you how many workers it takes to get this card. So I would actually say three workers, okay, so I'd pay my three workers back to the, <laughs> the labor force and then I would get that card. And so that's that's another action that you could do. And then the, the third action that's possible would be to sell this back to the bank. And so whatever the market value is of that on that turn would be what you get. In this instance, it's gold is worth a dollar, I would get five dollars or five monies for that card. When you take a card, a new one is placed out onto the board face down. Now what's unique about this kind of thing right here is the next person's turn, if they roll two again, the things that are face up would now become face down and whatever's face down becomes face up. And remember you can only go and get resources that are face up. So even though that four you know, that's worth whatever, you can't get now because it got flipped over. It's a very cool aspect to the game because what you what you need all depends on what you roll that round and so that it fluctuates and changes through each round. And then that's it. You go to the next character and then that person takes their turn, they get two actions and it just rotates. Happens over 12 rounds, at the end of those rounds uh, the game is over. So let's, let's talk about what we think about the game and uh, your feedback. Well, I think it's it's really well balanced here because of the character cards because they kind of throw a wrench into the works here. Mm -hmm. So if you're kind of behind but you see what the the the, uh, the big guy's doing in the game, you can kind of uh, fool with it to <laughs> yeah. kind of screw him over the whole game. Uh, and I've seen that, I noticed that as it gets less players per game, it's more of a versus, you know, there's a lot more uh, stuff going on to, you know, one character trying to hurt another character. But they balance that out on because there's more cards that you take out of the deck. So when you first go around to pick the, uh, the character cards, some random ones get pulled out to mm -hmm. begin with. So you don't even know who those are. Right. Well, I mean, the first person that looks like it can kind of figure it out. Right. But uh, <coughs> as it goes around, so you don't really know. And, and sometimes, like, the cards you want is like, oh, I need the market controller in order to stop him from selling the gold. Uh, and then you find out, oh, I don't even have the market it's controller. It's not even in there that round. <laughs> yeah. So that can... That's kind of like how their balance mechanic works, and it works out really well. I've seen. It. I've never. I don't think it's like it's ever going to go really lopsided unless somebody just gets really lucky, really lucky. on everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it could turn around for everybody. It's never a done deal, especially mm -hmm. with 12 rounds to go with these instant cards that are constantly helping and hurting you. So. Right. Yeah. I think the two components of the game that are that make the game is the one what you just mentioned is player characters because I think they do change the game up so much you can't you know just think ahead of time and think well this is all map I'm going to get my three dollars for that because of that <laughs> and be, and you don't know what your other counterparts are going to do the other thing is here 
when you flip your dice and you, and you flip the cards over and so on mm -hmm. because you don't know for sure what you're going to have there either. Yeah. And those two aspects of it, I think, really change it up a lot and keep the game, you know, go, uh, just keep it different the whole time, which is, which is something I like about it. Yeah. yeah. I, I liked how they limited you on the number of actions that you could take. So I can only do two. So on a turn, I couldn't buy workers, get them, go buy, get some gems, and then sell it all in the same turn. So yeah. you have to think ahead. You got to think, well, next round, I need some workers, so I got to buy them this round so that next sure. round I could get the gems and then sell them. So you're always kind of thinking around ahead of where you want to be. So I kind of like that aspect to it. It's a real simple economic game you know it's not really that complicated sure. at all um so you can buy gems and then you sell them and you get excited because you know this round it just went up to three and i have a card you know whatever there's all kinds of things that the character cards add to it that make it fun keep you in it even though it's not that deep of an economic game i think the character cards also do one thing it's uh, different groups play differently mm -hmm. and you'll see that real quick where i think you know you'll be in some games where all it's going to be where you're going back and forth sabotaging each other <laughs> and then other games where you hardly touch touch that you're just doing you just don't pick exactly them. exactly and then you got those games where the instant cards kind of rule the whole game because you know you try to hoard up like gyms or coal and something instant card comes along dumps all your resources right out of your hand right <coughs> so not fun um, <laughs> the the first time we played this game we played with the maximum number of people and in this version they actually sent us the extra players five to six and so we played with everybody I guess my only complaint would be with that many people 12 years was a long time yeah. so we uh, we actually cut that game short because it just took so long for every single person to go around the table do their two actions that was only one round so I would I would recommend keeping this three players maybe four players and then I think that I think the speed of the game will go a lot faster I think it'd be more enjoyable so um, Sound good? Sounds good. All right. It. So let's uh, give our review of the game. At the end of every review, we like to give a one die rating. Do we think you should green, go buy this game, add it to your collection? White, maybe you won't buy it, but you'll definitely play the game. And then red means you wouldn't buy it and you wouldn't play it. So we're all going to get our one die out. <laughs> yeah, in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> and reveal. Ah, a white okay. and two green. So right. tell us why you gave it a white. Uh, I would play it, like, but this is definitely like one of those party games. It's it's very very light though, mm -hmm. um, and it it kind of like Splendor. It reminded me of a bunch of right, Splendor right. and in some of his mechanics and stuff. Um, uh, but other than that, you know, I'm not that much into economy games and the mm -hmm. whole. It's not worker placement, but in a way, you're just buying workers so you can do it. Go do something. Yeah. You know, so. I don't know. I, I wouldn't purchase it myself. I still play it. It still it was still was fun. So I was very surprised with this game. Like I was very pleasantly surprised with how nice the production was. I love the the artwork, the simplicity of it. I thought I thought it was well thought out, smooth game. There's nothing in it. A lot of times when we do these kickstarters, we're always run through and say, oh, they didn't think about this, or maybe they didn't play test that well, or a rule is confusing or arguable. But this one, I thought it just played. It was just a simple yeah. game. It it feels like it should be on the shelf already, something that I've heard of. So I, I enjoyed it a lot. So I don't think if you were going to kickstart it, I don't think you'd have any worries. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's a really good game. Um, again, I'm like Tim in the sense that I'm normally not a light game person. Right. But, you know, you got to figure, you know, you're going to probably walk out the door twenty nine ninety five somewhere around that range, $34. And uh, most... Uh, <laughs> just most, throwing numbers. Just throwing numbers. Random numbers. The, random but, numbers. But the thing is, is that at that, you can have a group of people get together, and it's easy to learn. Uh, it's fun. It's complicated enough. To be fun, right. um, and but you can also bring in you know new people into games. I think it's a good entry level game for mm -hmm. for a group. Um, you know, it's, like, like I said, I mean, as an entry level game, I think it's fantastic, and mm -hmm. I think I, I can see this really doing really well as long as the name gets out there. Right, I can see it doing real well. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a game I play with my wife and her family, and I would sit down and play this, teach it quickly, get into it. So yeah, that's a win. So, okay. All right, well, thanks for watching our review of Mining Maniac. Check it out on Kickstarter. We've got a lot more reviews on our Facebook, I mean, our YouTube page. <laughs> We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those places. And as always, uh, support your local hobby shop. <laughs>